All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, is React really dying? On fire, the React logo. So you all learned a lot of advanced React today, right? Yeah. Okay, turns out none of it matters. Because you look, go on X or you go on my comment stream on YouTube, this is the kind of stuff you get. React is dead. Crazy, right? Well, maybe, I don't know. I'm the, the kind of the guy who wants to actually figure that out. So I figure, well, if they gotta go be, they gotta go somewhere, right? And they're not doing React. They're gonna do yeah, Svelte, Solid, View, Angular, maybe. So I'm a numbers guy too. Maybe figure it out. So let's do a take a look at the numbers. So let's start out with Svelte. Let's see, how's Svelte doing? All right, well, Svelte's getting 1.5 million downloads per week. That's real good. If you're running a open source project and you're getting 1.5 million downloads a week, you're doing pretty good, right? Yeah. Absolutely, okay. Let's try uh, Angular. How's Angular doing? Oh, Angular's pulling 3.5. Not bad, but a little bit of a kind of leveling there. Kind of interesting over the past couple of years. So definitely I would say probably not a competitor with React. Okay, how about Vue? And by the way, this is like the little app that I wrote. And guess what? In React, right? Of course. I didn't use AG Grid though, so I mean, AG Shards. Sorry about that. I should next time. All right, so that's Vue. That's doing pretty good. I think that could be competitive with React. But do you guys think it's competitive with React? Okay, let's see. React dwarfs everything. 25 million downloads a week. And crazy. So actually, I was like, well, maybe the, it dwarfs everything. So I added all of it up. All of React versus all of everything else, literally every other framework. And React is two and a half times more downloads than any are all of the other frameworks combined. Crazy, right? So let's talk about, well, actually, so React to the library. Let's talk about the frameworks. Let's talk about Next and Nuxt and all that and compare those because that's, you know, when you put this into action, it's mind the gap. There is, no, there is React is not a, a standalone thing. You need to add something to it. So let's go and compare the frameworks. Let's go take like Next and React Router and compare those to how Nuxt and all of the other ones, like Spellkit and all that, how are they doing? Incredible, 4.4 times the number. In fact, actually I would say React Router is a huge part of this. React Router gets a lot of downloads. Basically you got the spa is gonna be React Router, next is gonna be your SSR. All right, but it's not just that, it's us. It's us downloading the React developer tools. Four million users, it's four million developers. It's incredible. So with all this popularity, yeah, is it dead? Maybe, but it still sucks, right? That's another thing I get. So it's dead or it sucks. What do we say? Okay, you got all these things. You don't use this, you spell, you use you solid, you got all that stuff's better than that. So do React developers think React sucks? Well, we actually had a survey for that. We had the state of JS 2023. Everybody take the state of JS. All right, okay, fine, all right. You really should. These are fantastic surveys. They really help folks figure out where the community is going. And the community in this case is really liking React. 71% of respondents say if they, well, that they knew about React, one, and that they liked React. 28% said they didn't like React. So that's three, you know, three quarters. That's really good for a framework that has or a library that has 4 million users, that's incredible. You compare that to Vue, you compare that to Angular. The only one that really comes close is Svelte. It's got about the same number of enthusiastic positive reviews, but the salient big difference here is that the kind of light blue is a very odd chart, honestly, I gotta say. But people aren't actually using Svelte. They know about it, but they don't actually use it. Whereas with React, they use it and they like it. So does that describe you guys? Do you like and use React? <laughs> Absolutely, okay, thank you, okay. How about pain points? So there was also the state of React 2023. It came out like <laughs> barely at the end of 2023. Um, and there's an interesting thing here, right? You, you look at that chart and you're like, wow, 
people have all kinds of problems like forward ref and memo and performance. What people don't notice is down there in the tiny little by the, the print, fine print at the bottom, it says that only 1,500 people out of the 13,000 that took the survey said that they hated anything about React. That's only 12%. It's actually less than we saw before with the, the state of JS. And back to the state of JS, ever since it was released, 2016, people have ranked it as the number one most positive framework over time. And that's just incredibly impressive. All right, one last chart for you guys. So admired and desired, this is from Stack Overflow. They kind of have a very interesting way of thinking about this. But let's take a look up at the top. React, overall, incredibly positive sentiment. The next JS is third on the line. You hear all these negative things about these frameworks. People really like it. And I think that's something when you, when you think about all the stuff that you learned today, just think about that you know, you're investing in a really good technology that people really like. All right, so. Also learn that when you put React with boots on, you get a very creepy, weird image in AI, or in Leonardo AI in this case. So he's not dead yet. I actually want one of these. <laughs> They're really cool. It's got like some sort of plasticky kind of thing going on. All right, so what's going on here, right? So this is, this is an odd difference between these things. You have an incredibly positive, everybody's using this framework, and you got all these folks out there saying, ah, you know, it's dead, it's this and that. So as a YouTuber, I get to talk to folks a lot about the problems that they have in the comment stream. And I got some insights. So I've got three basic buckets. Yeah. And a dry mouth. Of things that people don't like or the, the issues that folks are having with React. The first is that they're just overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that you have to choose when you start working with React. So what would those be? The rendering model, right? You gotta choose. Are you gonna use server-side rendering, client rendering, SSG, site, static site generation, incremental site generation. There's so many options to choose from. Are you gonna use a component library? Are you gonna use MUI, like our down in the courtyard? Are you gonna use ShadCN, Tailwind? Any fa fans of ShadCN out there? Yeah, okay, all right, cool. State managers, anybody use Zustand? How about Zustin? Zustin? I'm, I'm kind of curious actually, is it Zustand or is it Zustand? Okay, Zustand, yeah, yeah. How about Zustand? Oh, uh, okay. I've heard that, that I did a video on Zustand way early days and I, I said Zustand because I'm an American, I say that that way and uh, Man, the German folks came out and they're like, no, 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 you cannot say it that way. You gotta say it, Zustand. So I learned that. And now it, and everybody's like, Zustin, like, what are you saying? All right, what are you gonna use for an API layer? Are you, are you API standard? Are you gonna use TRPC, GraphQL, GRPC, God forbid, sorry about that, please don't use that. Uh, REST, if you do use GRPC, use Twerp. It's really cool, it's from Twitch. Actually makes it halfway palatable to use. <laughs> Uh, a persistence layer, are you going to use Prisma? Are you going to use, are you just going to go direct to the database? How are you going to store your data? And then how are you going to lay your project out? Is it going to be a monorepo? Are you going to be sharing code? What are you, you going to use linting standards? Which linting standards are you going to use? I mean, everything is a choice. And there are frameworks out there that are really nice and they kind of make a lot of those choices for you. Like Angular is a, is a classic example. But React, having its kind of roots in working in whatever environment you have and kind of replacing your existing view management model, basically said, well, it's up to you, which is actually kind of cool, but also daunting because you might choose wrong, but I'm here to tell you that choosing wrong is actually okay. So born out of my experience, I can tell you, first thing you wanna do is use defensive programming, right? If you're gonna buy into something try to make sure that you can isolate it as much as you can. We talked about like a state manager. So you've got some cool business logic going on in your state manager. You have to like decide how to put stuff in a cart or something like that. Disconnect it from the state management mechanism as best as you can so that if you decide later on that you want to change your state manager to switch done from something else, then you can do that. Another thing is the churn that the that things change is going to be any part of the process of a healthy application. So you might, because the specifications may change, 
You may get a cool new customer that's like, oh, it's got to have GraphQL in it. And then you got to come up to speed on that. So that is part of the process. You got to make sure that you build that in. And then as things change, you got to prioritize catching up with it. So if you want to go from, you know, 4.1 to 4.2, cool, but don't over prioritize that. You don't want to be, have the only thing in your tech debt be this <laughs> updating your package JSON all the time. All right. So number two, just halfway through. So React has gotten too complex. Anybody hear this from folks? Oh, it's too complex. It used to be this simple statement, it's still simple view library, and now it's gotten crazy. So one of the things I hear about in terms of complexities are the re-rendering mechanics. So when you think when you talk to your teams and you talk to folks who are starting out using React, this I've done a lot of videos about the basics mechanics of React, and this is what a lot of folks get stuck on. There's one thing I call like the magic template idea, which is that the return statement of that function and the component is somehow a magic template that automatically gets rerun, but the code above it doesn't. So these are things that a lot of folks, when they're just starting out with React, learn and, they are, and they're mistaken. So they need to figure out how to get around that or figure out what the right way is. Effects with use effect and also asynchronous programming, that is a, a big pain point for folks. And also this one I hear all the time about client server rendering and also state management and the confusion between the two. What does the state management certainly look like on the server? How does that sync with what's on the client? Some folks like think there's an actual like continuous connection between those two things. There is not. Last year I was here talking about the connection between, I think it was Redux and Next.js and how to properly use Redux in a Next.js context. It's complicated. It actually, it really is. So figuring that all out is really important or, or that's the stuff that folks struggle with. So let me tell you a couple of stra strategies that I use or recommendations that I have for you. One is to know those React fundamentals cold, like render the rendering model, how components re-render, when components re-render, what triggers a re-render, what doesn't trigger a re-render. You have to know those cold. Also understanding JavaScript and TypeScript, like how in particular, how ob objects and arrays work. A lot of folks get messed up with memory management, objects, arrays, particularly nested objects where they can mutate a value kind of deeply nested inside of an object and they get, whoa, they get freaked out when like, oh, I changed it over here and it's somehow copied over there. What's happening? And so I did a whole video just on memory management, like going back to the absolute basics of like how a computer lays out memory and how that actually change it and how that actually works inside of JavaScript. And that's a huge deal because folks, when they go through boot camp, that's not something you learn. And it's something you end up learning by getting incredibly frustrated by it when you run into bugs with it. And then another thing I see is that folks overcomplicate their architecture. They bring in all kinds of libraries when they don't need to. So they'll start off with beat and they'll just add on a couple of state managers or whatever, because everybody uses them. And before that, you know it, they've got like just way too much code and they have no understanding of what the heck doll does. Another thing we, I see a lot, or the last one I see a lot of is innovation fatigue. The, the framework just seems like it's just moving way, way, way too fast. But if you look at the timeline, it actually isn't moving all that fast. We got hooks in 2019. We got RSCs in 2022. That's three years to be able to work with hooks and integrate them into your system. But we still get all this, you know, hey, Things are moving way too fast. Like I did a video recently called Is One the One? Now One is a really cool framework. It's a, a single framework that you can use to build web applications and mobile applications in React Native from one code base. It's really freaking cool. Did a video on it, showed it how it showed folks how it works. What I get, ugh, so many, oh, we got yet another framework kind of things, but this is really cool. So, as an older engineer, I've been doing this for like 40 years now. Learning how to cope with innovation has been something that I can now kind of pass on to you. So here's a couple of tips that I got for you. First, don't get freaked out when, I, when someone shows you something really cool, like all this cool stuff that you learned today. You may not need it. You may not use it right away. So don't like, oh man, I learned about this, so I have to use it right away. It may not be appropriate for your project, but understanding that it's out there, that'll help you. Think about things like it could, but think about positively. It could simplify stuff. So that might be a reason that you want to adopt it. Also, they're not trying to mess with you. 
Like they're not releasing stuff out in the wild. Like the React team isn't like adding in RSCs in the framework just to mess with you, right? You got to think like, ooh, wow, that everybody is trying just to do the right thing. And then, so you want to see what you know, what what the framework and what what this new thing is actually trying to accomplish. Like look for the underlying motivation and make sure that if it syncs with what you actually want to do, that's something you want to embrace. And then finally, use proof of concepts to figure out if it's actually going to work in your environment. Don't actually try and just integrate it into your app right away. That can cause a lot of problems and make it just a lot more complex. It's nice to actually work with things in isolation. So it's all about like thinking positively as opposed to negatively. And all of this stuff, this innovation and these choices and the complexity of it, actually, when you think about it from the other way around, that it's not bad, it's actually good, prove to us that React is a fearless framework, right? We've got 11 years of, of, a, of a library and they're still doing amazing stuff. They added React server components to an 11 year old library. That's incredible. It's also everywhere, right? Think of all the places where you can use React, web, mobile, it's incredible. And also it's the first choice. Anytime that somebody's gonna build a new state manager or framework, they're gonna build it on top of React. But anything's not perfect, right? So we need governance. That's one of the things we saw, right? So Dominic was just up here earlier in the year. He had an issue with React 19 and suspense. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah, okay, cool. Well, that actually kind of pointed out that the React team is making some decisions about where the React framework is going that we might not appreciate. So cool, they're actually responsive to that. And that's why React 19 is currently not in out yet because they're still working through those suspense issues. So that's cool. But I think we also need a level of governance and then that showed it. Also, React has been at times personality driven. For example, you got Dan Abramov versus the world over RSCs, right? This is a big thing when RSCs first came out, Dan was on Twitter trying to convince people that RSCs were actually cool and fine and the, the reaction they got was really really terrible and it actually it actually cost the react team some members and that's not great so the good news is that with some change of the structure of that team now it's not less personality driven we saw that with react con 2024 where the entire team was up there giving presentations about the various parts of it so ask you uh, what can you do how can you interact with this team? How can you do these? How can you work with React positively? Well, the first thing is to keep it positive, right? Don't don't try to like slam on React team members. Just keep it positive. Another really important thing is to engage, re-engage with your community. I actually hit a Twitter poll up and asked folks, has your local meetup come back from COVID? So question for you, has your local me meetup come back? Mm -hmm. Eh, okay, all right. In Portland, mine has not. So it gets, you know, maybe 50 people where it used to get like 200. So I really, really encourage you, go to those local meetups. Speak at local conferences. A friend of mine today is going to a local AI conference with like right here in London with like 80 people in it. And those are the kind of feeder conferences that feed into the bigger conferences and the kind of place where you can get an opportunity to speak yourself. Next is contribute to open source, right? All of the cool ecosystem that we have around React is because people like you had great ideas for cool libraries and brought them to life. All right, well, that's what I got. React is nowhere near dead. I'm Jahur on YouTube. Go and come on over and subscribe.